Good day to you all and welcome back to the Eastern Bloc. I'm in beautiful countryside of Romania and I thought to myself what better way to celebrate the end of October than to review this rather quirky and uh, well interesting French uh, sedan. I know that makes no sense at all I was just trying to uh, get some intro going. So what do we have here? Well it's a Renault symbol what does that actually mean? Well, it's a cheap eco economic car made by the French automaker Renault. It's based on the, on the X62 platform, the Clio 2 platform, and it's a, well, it's a sedan variant of the Clio 2. Nothing more special about it. It's an interesting car, at least in my opinion, because it well, it underlines, it defines what the French are all about. They provide cheap cars for the masses. They and the Italians, they do this like nobody else. If you want a cheap, economic, but yet very reliable, fun to drive car, you go to the Italians and to some extent to the French. And I guess that's what I'm trying to uh, convey to you today. Or you could look at this car and consider it an upmarket Logan. Let's consider these two hypotheses and have a look at the car, see what it's all about. As I was saying, it's based on an X62 platform. That means that uh, it was uh, further um, it was a further evolution of the hatchback version of the Renault Clio second generation. This second generation is actually a facelift of the Renault Clio symbol launched in 1999. And it is a joint development effort by French, Turkish and Romanian uh, engineers and designers employed by Renault. It's not called, a, it's not called the Renault Clio symbol anymore. Uh, when this car was launched in 2008, I believe it was simply called the symbol in our country at least. And in some other markets, it was known as the Renault Talia. It's got an interesting and dynamic design. I sort of like it. I don't know if it matches the proportions or it, uh, I, it, not, it doesn't necessarily uh, work well with the, well, you know, with the French economy um, front wheel di drive setup that we have here. Nevertheless, considering the way the first generation looked, I think this is a huge improvement. The headlights are sort of rounded and pulled back. Uh, I, I remember this design in the Renault Fluence. That's another sedan for the um, emerging markets, the, the Eastern Europe and the Middle East, I believe. Uh, but that one is based on the Renault Megane. It's a compact car. This is a much more, more smaller variant. It's actually a mini, a B-class car that has an extended uh, trunk over its rear wheels. For some reasons, uh, sedans are very popular in countries like Romania, Turkey, I don't know, Albania, Serbia, um, Bulgaria, and countries like that. Well, Eastern Europe and maybe mm, sort of where Asia meets Europe. As I've said, it's an interesting design choice. It's very dynamic. I like the way that they sort of lifted the um, um, the window area and they, they added some lines for the bodywork. Uh, the design looked modern, but it's, uh, it's uh, elegant and uh, while well, it's not overly done, 
They're also, they quite cleverly, the guys at Renault, they, they just added this third window to cover up the, the hump uh, caused by the, the trunk. Uh, the first generation Renault Clio symbol had that hideous uh, bump, uh, junk in the trunk situation going on. I never really liked that. I thought it was the worst, uh, or worst, uh, um, well, visual element of the whole car. This one, however, carries its, uh, its cues much more elegantly. It's quite nice. I don't know how to put it any better. I won't insist on it uh, because, well, it's an economy car. It's not something you would overly consider. It is, however, very small. If I have a look at it, it's almost like I could, I don't know, carry it or hug it. It's, uh, I can almost reach the, the other end of the windscreen from one side. Uh, for sure, I can touch more than the middle of the car. When's the last time you were able to touch your uh, more than the half of your hood or bonnet, uh, but just simply um, reaching with your hand? I think cars have gotten a little big lately. And, well, actually, I do appreciate the Clio for uh, the symbol for what it offers, this uh, basic cheeky cheapness. Uh, but it's quite refreshing, actually, in today's world of luxury SUVs, electric vehicles, crossovers and what have you. It's actually fun and uh, engaging to, uh, to meet, uh, meet up and to analyze such a small, cheap, effective car and why not maybe fun to drive. I don't know. But I'll get to that in a second. So you could actually, um, you could actually love this sort of car. I know it's not a classic. I know it's not a collectible. I know that most of them are not in good shape. So there's no real interest for cars like this. Still, it might be worth considering. Um, it's interesting and refreshing to see a car with little pretensions added to it. But before we get on any further, let's talk mechanics. Uh, X62 platform, what does that mean? Well, at least in the back, the suspension setup is not that uh, great. It's oriented towards uh, reliability and uh, resisting rough roads. So uh, it's a um, semi-rigid setup, something like that, I believe. I'm sorry, I haven't documented this properly, but actually uh, I know Renault and their suspension setup, so it's it's a rather interesting subframe which connects the rear uh, wheels. They don't offer great uh, driving dynamics, but they sort of work, these suspension setups. Under the hood, though, we have another pleasant surprise. It's one of those uh, typical four cylinder lumps, a big clunk of iron. Uh, a gasoline naturally aspirated engine uh, as uh, the sort of thing that well it gets rarer and rarer these days this unit is a 1.6 liter four cylinder petrol naturally aspirated engine uh, which produces 105 horsepower and 148 newton meters of torque it is mated to a five speed manual gearbox so there's nothing fancy there, but uh, well, coupled to this small bodywork and this light car, um, I believe they make quite the nice pair. Uh, I'm sure this is not an overly economical engine, but it's not extensively uh, expensive to run or to maintain. So this, uh, so this 1.6 cylinder engine, uh, it's quite pleasant to, uh, to meet up with a four, uh, four cylinder uh, unit um, in this influx inflation of three uh, inline threes with turbos and what have you. And just for the fun of it, let's have a listen to how it runs.
The interior is quite predictably small. <laughs> Please uh, excuse all the uh, different uh, knickknacks and uh, well, miscellaneous uh, elements here. <laughs> it's uh, actually, um, it's the owner's um, uh, stuff that are in here. Uh, they're laid out in a rather uh, quirky and sort of specific fashion, so I have refrained myself from removing them. Just added to the list of uh, interesting things to the Renault symbol. Uh, Quite a nice interior in here. It's very much upmarket compared to the Dacia Logan. I would rather have this car instead of the second generation Logan or maybe the first generation Logan facelift. That's what this car is competing with. Uh, seating arrangements, well, they're quite predictably not uh, that comfortable. Uh, you sort of sit like uh, you would in a bench. There is no lateral support or um, any sort of ergonomics involved, but that's okay because this is an economy car. Um, uh, <laughs> one thing to note, uh, you sit quite high and the, the cutouts for the windows are quite low, so it's almost like driving, um, I don't know, a typical old car or a mini SUV. Um, the window, quite interestingly, uh, the front uh, windshield is, well, it's almost, uh, it's uh, ridicul ridiculously close to you uh, compared to other, um, other uh, more modern cars. It's like Jeremy Clarkson was saying for, uh, about the 911, uh, you almost wear the windshield as a pair of spectacles on your eyes. You don't have any depth here. That's what I feel with the older cars and with this uh, Renault uh, symbol more specifically. The steering wheel is leather wrapped and it's aged quite nicely. So has the gear shift knob and well, all the materials seem to be in uh, okay shape. Um, the plastics are a bit cheap on the door cards, but at least they're nicely appointed and the fit and finish is uh, very, very much on par with other Western offerings from the time. So uh, this could be considered in the same class as an Opel Corsa or Volkswagen Polo in terms of interior quality. I know it wasn't quite there, but at least it was striving to do so. So points to Renault go for that effort. Mind you, this was not a cheap car when it was new. I believe it cost something like 12,000 euros, which is not much in today's money, but back then, oh well, mm, I don't know. Maybe you could have gotten a fully loaded Logan uh, or um, just this uh, bare bones uh, Renault symbol. Evidently, there is not a market for cars like this. Uh, the Logan has taken over the symbol's place. In some countries now, the Dacia Logan is sold as a Renault symbol or maybe a Renault Talia. I know that for the second generation Dacia that happens. So when this car went out of production, the Dacia Logan simply took over and it's been quite quite some time now. I believe in 2013 this car went out of production. Um, space in the back, well, it's rather cramped, but this car's party piece is that huge trunk. It's got 510 liters of boot capacity, which for a small car is very impressive. I don't know that, whether I would choose a car based on that criteria alone, but then again, uh, Eastern Europeans tend to do so. They very much like the elegance of a, of a sedan with the practicality of moving uh, everything, including a sack of potatoes or maybe the holiday pig and the trunks. It, I'm a hatchback fan myself, so I never drive sedans, especially cheap ones. But there you have it. But I guess I've mentioned the interior sufficiently. Let's get on with driving the car. So, 
driving the Renault Symbol 1.6 16 valve 105 horsepower right off the bat what I can tell you um, the steering is a bit heavy though it's not intuitive it's not communicative in fact it's very rigid and numb dead center uh, there's a bit of body roll in the car quite a bit actually but it's that sort of fun of fun to drive type of body roll the the type of body roll that uh, communicates uh, whether the car is straight or uh, it's in a band or some sorts and that is because the car is very light it, at 1.1 tons it's not intimidating and well any maneuver you might do is easily controllable the gearbox is a bit numb as well uh, it's easily communicative but it's not fast uh, I'd I don't really like the shape of the steering wheel and I feel cramped here because that uh, because of the closeness of that uh, windscreen I was mentioning but there's also some type of delicious nostalgia when driving this type of car. It's from a bygone era. This car comes from the 80s and 90s. I know that it was built in 2010, this particular example, but actually the, the platform that it's based on is, well, it's rather old. Um, it does feel okay, it's not difficult to drive, but you can feel those, uh, well, those limitations uh, compared to modern cars. Yet, I like it, it's quirky and it's refreshing in today's world. It, al it also, uh, <laughs> well, it, it also puts you alert and it encourages you to drive quite slowly because this car cannot handle the bends. But it is uh, very raw, very, very connected, and it offers the, the type of road feel that uh, has been lost to us in the last couple of years. It's, the, engine pulls quite the engine pulls quite nicely, and I'm sure that it's more than up to the task of uh, uh, driving in, um, in modern conditions. It's the chassis itself that is the low point of this car. But if you don't push it over the limit, you'll be quite fine. Uh, fuel consumption, I don't know if it matters, but I suspect it would go around uh, 6.57 liters per 100 kilometers in highway or moderate out of town driving. If you do city miles, this will do about 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Uh, that's an equivalent of uh, 23 to 24 MPG US uh, gallons or uh, a bit more in imperial uh, values. <laughs> but still, figures are not important in this car. What is important is the way it feels. It feels like it, it's coming from the mid-90s. Uh, it's very interesting to drive it. It's, it. it sort of accentuates your senses. You have to uh, estimate when to shift. You have to uh, do all these things uh, that engage you to drive um, correctly. Right now I'm doing 60, but I'm very focused on the road and I would say I feel like I'm doing about 80 or 90 kilometers per hour. Uh, don't get me wrong, this car is in top uh, mechanical condition. It's a low mileage car. I'm going to tell you right now. Believe it or not, this car has 47,488 kilometers quite low so uh, mechanically this car is in top shape um, it's the platform and the technology itself that are ancient they're not bad by any means but uh, yeah you wouldn't so if you want a modern car this is not for you 
Let's talk prices. I believe that a good example of this on the second-hand car market would uh, fetch around three to, to four thousand euros. Don't uh, don't be looking into the high mileage ones or uh, mechanically um, uh, totaled ones because uh, well those aren't uh, really worth uh, buying. They're just uh, rust buckets that are uh, will drain your budget as i've said again i'm going back to the driving so i'm doing 70 and i'm doing some sort of maneuvers on this road it's a pleasant road to drive it's quite free but the feeling well it's it's like doing 120 kilometers per hour and uh, well to tell you the truth if you throw it into corners it doesn't quite like it it sort of implies that it does because you get those uh, visceral sensations but don't play with the car like this because uh, well it's not meant to be driven at the limit all nostalgia and uh, descriptions uh, of the driving sensations aside uh, I truly miss the four-cylinder petrol engines. The typical 16-valve naturally aspirated electronically injected fuel injected uh, unit. Uh, well, we thought to ourselves, us uh, car enthusiasts, we always said that uh, while well, six cylinders are the way to go and so on, those sing, those are melodious and whatnot. But actually, uh, while well, a four lamp is just as fun when it's uh, with when it's a good engine, uh, I recent I know I shouldn't be biased, but I have recently driven um, a three cylinder turbo petrol engine, and quite frankly, uh, I don't like them. There's something about the way they drop in uh, revs. Uh, I don't know if it's intentional to reduce RPM and consumption or it's a, well, it's a natural consequence of the engineering of a three-cylinder lamp, but uh, actually they, they sort of go down very quickly. It's like it's a, it's a motorcycle engine. This one, this one has inertia, has revs, has engine braking, has very nice acceleration. So when you're driving this car, well, or if you're buying this car, well, actually you're buying this engine along with uh, an old uh, chassis and uh, uh, an antique suspension. At least that's how it feels to me. So I guess that has been all for today. I have been working quite hard driving this car, <laughs> but it has been fun and rewarding. Thank you for watching, please like, comment and subscribe and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!